Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Whatever time you may be viewing this broadcast. Indeed, today is the day that the Lord hath made. You and I should rejoice and be glad in it. What a beautiful day it is to be alive in the kingdom of God. And as I always say, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions faileth not. They are new to us every morning and great is our God's faithfulness. Good morning to our Faith Forward YouTube family and our Faith Forward Facebook family. It is so good to see you. I pray that you have had a marvelous week a marvelous weekend, and now you have come online to hear a word from the Lord. And I know today that God is going to speak a word into your spirit that is going to literally shift you and shift your posture and shift your thinking. And I have just super excited about what God is doing Uh in the lives of God's people. Good morning, Kayana. Let me call out some of these names. Uh, I believe that when I speak your name into the atmosphere, that God is just literally shifting things in your life. I feel the shifting already. Uh, Sister Vermel, I just want to appreciate you for being such a, a valuable supporter of this ministry for the last four years, I just want to honor you today. Ed, the same thing. Koshanya, Danita, the same thing. Uh, you all have been super faithful and I am grateful and thankful for you. Why don't you take, as well as you, Kayana, you have just been a blessing uh, to me and to this ministry. And I am just excited again about what God is doing. Take a moment and share this word. Uh, on your page. Come on, I need you to share it uh, because there's someone in your network that needs uh, a rhema word from the Lord today. Uh, I'm not talking about something uh, that just uh, comes out of anywhere. No, 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 no. There's a Logos word, but then there's a rhema word that is specific that hovers over your life. And whatever you do and wherever you go, that rhema word stalks you. I'm preaching already. You, you can't get away from the word that God has over your life. Good to see you, Dr. Todd. Good to see you, Vanessa and uh, Gloria. Blessed night. Good to see you this past week. It was so good running into you. Uh, you, you cannot escape what God has hovering over your life. Okay. Okay. I want you to go ahead and get that in your spirit, uh, even as we begin to take our text this morning. But before I get ahead of myself, uh, good morning, Annette and Melchie. I want to put in your hearing on next Saturday. Next Saturday, I will be with my dear sister, assistant pastor, Crystal Artis. We will be in Wilson, North Carolina. I have already placed the flyer on the page. Make sure, make sure that you register for this conference. Uh, yours truly will be the keynote speaker and God has given me a word. I'm telling you, he's been drenching me in the prophetic and uh, you don't want to miss this opportunity to be uh, with us at the women's conference, SALT, SALT Women's Conference, Sisters Abiding in Light and Truth. Again, the host is uh, Assistant Pastor Crystal Artis, a dear sister, uh, senior pastor, Sheila artist, and uh, some wonderful, wonderful women of God are on this. Uh, uh, I don't want to call it a program. I want to call it a divine moment. Uh, and that's exactly what it's going to be. Uh, you'll see the ticket information, but I want as many of our faith forward family women. I want you to meet us there uh, at the Darden Alumni Center, 1600 Lipscomb Road, in Wilson, North Carolina. The time of the event will be uh, 10 a.m. So make plans uh, to come from everywhere. All right, that, that is all the pertin pertinent announcements that we have. We're going this morning to Joel chapter two. Joel 
chapter two or Joel chapter two. I just want to read about five words or maybe six. Joel chapter two, verse 25. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. And I will restore to you the years. And I'm going to stop right there because somebody's going to take off in your home this morning. Uh, did you hear what the prophet said to Judah? It's the same word that God is speaking to you today. He says, I, no, no, no. He says, and I will restore to you the years. I don't know uh, specifically who this message is for, but I know that it's for me. And I know that it's for at least 50 of you that are either online or shall uh, uh, replay this, this time of, of sharing together, that God is going to restore unto you. Notice what Joel says. He's talking to Judah, who has been through a series, listen, of famine, a series of, of, of times in which um, God has allowed canker worms and locusts and caterpillars to eat up their spoil. And sometimes in our lives, ladies and gentlemen, we feel as if God has allowed the enemy to come and eat up everything, listen, that we have planted. My God, my God. I'm not talking about the enemy coming and eating up things that you did not plant. I'm not talking about the enemy coming and destroying things that don't belong to you. I'm talking about there are times in our lives, times in our ministry, times in our families, times in our marriages, times in our relationship with our children and those we love. That we feel that God has allowed the enemy to come in and destroy everything that we have put in effort to build. Now, for some of you that haven't done anything, this message may not be for you. You just share it and somebody on your, 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 your timeline perhaps can benefit. But for those of you who have struggled and you put your hand to the plow and you've been faithful to the call and you've been faithful to ministry and you've been faithful to your family, you've been faithful to your church, there comes a time uh, in your life where you feel the tension between what God said and where you are currently. It is a very frustrating place. It is a very confusing place. Can I be honest with you? It is a very hurtful place where you find yourselves where you have planted, you have watered, but you have not yet seen the increase. Many of us, uh, particularly those of us who have a call upon our lives, and that is all of us, <laughs> all of us uh, are, are, are called with a holy call. All of us have an assignment in the earth that God has placed on the inside of us to shift and change the narrative of not just our lives, but the lives of the people that are connected to us. All of us have an assignment. And don't you let the devil make you think that you're just here by happenstance. You're not just alive just because God had nothing else to do. You did not survive a three-year pandemic only for God to bring you out and you walk around with a sense of nihilism or a sense of uh, hopelessness. No, 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 no. God allowed you to survive the worst season of your life so that he can bring you forth with a greater anointing. My God, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost moving right now. That's for somebody who for the last three weeks have been feeling discouraged. That's, that's for the people 
online this morning or or next week who who have been feeling as if you have missed your season and missed your time no 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 you haven't missed your season you haven't missed your time you haven't made a wrong step you're right where god desires for you to be can i tell you god knows what god is doing i better i better i better calm down i better calm down because somebody's going to mess around and get delivered this morning. I better calm down before somebody mess around and gets a revelation of where you are. I, I'm telling you that God knows what God is doing. And God has not forgotten about you. God has not overlooked you. God has not turned God's back on you. God has not forgotten about the assignment that he has birthed on the inside of you. God says, now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. He's... He is Joel, son of Pithuel, who, who is issuing uh, this message or this prophetic word of hope. But this word of prophetic hope does not come uh, without a season where Israel or rather Judah has gone through destruction. My God, they, they've gone through destruction destruction. They've gone through heartache. They've gone, oh my God, they've gone through separation. They have gone through rejection and they've, they've gone through the moments in their lives where they felt that, that, that they were not God's people and, and God called them out to be their, his people. Don't, don't think, don't think that the prophecy is not going to come without some tension. My God, that's where many of us, we, we miss it because it's going to get better. It's going to get better because I got to get to this text. So some of us think that, 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 that the prophetic word, when it's released out of the mouth of the prophet, that is going to come tomorrow. And some, in some cases it will, but how God typically works is God will show you the end of a thing, but then make you come back and walk it out. That's why the word of God says, be steadfast, be unmovable. Come on. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in. Oh, my God. I need I need somebody to catch that. Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So what what what, what is the what is the writer saying? The writer saying what you do for God, God does not forget. What you've done for God, God does not forget. It could have been 10 years ago. It could have been five years. It could have been last week. What you do for God, God does not forget. Why? Because God is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness. But he's faithful. He's faithful. Put in the comment thread, God is faithful. You need to remind your spirit of that. Because when dis discouragement comes, you need to remind yourself of the word of God that God is faithful. What is he faithful to? He's not necessarily faithful to you. He's faithful to his own word. My God, my God. Did you hear what I said? It's, it's not that you've been so good that God has to keep his promise. He's, he's, he's faithful to the word that he spoke over your life. He's, he, he, he has to chase his own word. When God speaks a thing, it cannot die. When God speaks a thing, that word cannot die. That's the reason why you could not die. That's the reason why you survived. That's, that's the reason why you survived the car accident. That's the reason why you survived cancer. That's, that's the reason why you survived that suicide attempt. I know you swallowed a lot of pills and nobody knows about it. You just woke up one morning and said, thank you, Jesus, for keeping me through that. You survived not because you deserve to survive. You have survived because there's a rhema word that's still budding in your spirit. It hasn't, it hasn't matured yet. It hasn't come to full fruition. Every morning, every morning you wake up, you ought to thank God 
that, that God has allowed his word to continue to unfold in your life. I got to get to this text. Lest you think I'm not a preacher. I'm just an exhorter. No, 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 no. I, I got to get to this. He, he tells Joel, first of all, to explain to the people the reason why they've gone through some things. But then he says, yes, they've gone through moments of pain and trepidation. He says, but I will never allow you to go through destruction without reconstruction. YouTube, are y'all with me this morning? Y'all are live over there. I love it. I will never, God says to you today, and he's telling you, I will never allow you to be cast down and be destroyed. No, 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 no. He, he, Paul says, cast down. I've been cast down, but I'm not destroyed. And every moment of destruction or deconstruction is a moment where God wants to issue restoration. He says in chapter two, verse 25, he tells the prophet Joel to speak to Zion. He says, tell them, and I will restore to you the years. Can I be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen? Some of us have gone through things, not for weeks, not for days, but for years. I'm taking this particular text in its literal sense because some of you are tired. I feel it. I feel it. I sense it in the spirit. You, 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 you prayed. And the only thing you can tell God was God, I'm tired. I'm worn out. I have faith. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the resurrection. We've already celebrated that. But there's some of you on this live that says, God, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Yes, Buffy, I hear you in the spirit. I, I'm, I'm, I'm depleted. I don't have any more faith. I, I, have, I have masked all that I can mask. You've asked me how I was doing and I told you that I was blessed and I'm good. I've done all of that. But some of you are just saying, I'm tired of masking. I'm tired of telling you that I'm fine when I'm really on the inside. I'm having a breakdown. I don't know if anybody's ever been there. Some of you, your spirit and your soul, it's only the fourth month of the year and you've already, you're already over 2024 and you said, I'm tired. But God speaking a word to you today and God is saying to you today that I am restoring unto you the years. Come on and just lift up your hands right there. The years, the years of tears that you've sown. God has spoken to me and said to me, and if he's speaking it to me, he's speaking it to you. He says, Rita, I am going back into those years where you felt as if you, you were doing nothing, but you were pouring out all that you had. God says, I'm coming back and I am restoring unto you the years. Receive it. Yes, Felicia. If it's you, I want you to put in the comment thread. I received that from me. You have given out. You've given to your family and it seems like you've got nothing in return. God says, I'm restoring to you the years. You, you've given to your children. And, and it seems like the more you give to your children, listen, the worse they act. But God says to you today, there's a word and the prophetic word that is upon your life that says, I am restoring to you the years. You've been faithful. And you say, God, I should have been married by now. I, 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 I should have a, a, a family by now. But God says to you, I know how old you are. I know how old you are. But God says, I can do in two days, 
what the enemy tried to destroy the last 20 years, God says to you today. And that's why you're not on here today uh, just by happenstance. You didn't fumble on this live this morning because you didn't have anything else to, to do. You're, you're on this live this morning by divine assignment because God wants to encourage you and tell you, whoo, glory to God, that every year that you suffer, every year that you cry, Every year that you felt that God had rejected you, every year that you suffered in abuse, every year that you suffered and nobody knew what was going on with you, every year that you suffered abuse, every year that you cried and you put on face, God says, your season of suffering has now come to an end. He says, I'm restoring unto you the years. Now, this is the problem. Here is the problem with restoration. Here, here's, here is the issue with restoration. When God restores you or when God begins the process of restoration, many of us don't follow through with the process of restoration because we think that God is going to restore us back to our old selves. Mm. The reason why we abandon the restoration process, the reason why we get frustrated when God is restoring us is because when God restores us, he never restores us back to the place that we used to be. Because if the place that you used to be was so good, then destruction would have never happened. I, I, I love to watch um, just different different TV shows. I love to watch HGTV. I love to watch those things. But there's a there's a old old show that used to come on on MTV, and I'm going to date myself. Uh, there's an old show that used to come on on MTV called Pimp My Ride, <laughs> and Pimp My Ride was hosted by a a rap. Uh, artist. I don't know if he retired at the time, but his name was Exhibit. And what Exhibit would do is he would go and find a person with an old car. You remember Koshanya? Okay. All right. I thought I'd find some, some 90s, 2000 people on here. He, he, he would find a person that had an old car and he would stop them on the street and say, hey, I want you to come over to West Coast Customs and I want to do something with your car. I, I, I don't want you to come back until it's over with. And what they would do is there would be a team of people that would look at the car and the car would be dented and the car would have paint that was falling off of it and the tires would be old and the motor would be messed up. And they would take that car and over a series of days, they would take that car and they would, uh, beat out the dents and and they would look at the motor and they take out the seats and they take out the carpet and they take out the the stereo system and they look at it and they say oh this is old and this is something da la 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 da but over the course of a few days they would restore that vehicle and they'd put in new seats and put in new carpet and put in uh, uh, somebody knows where I'm going and, 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 and so they would restore this car and they would go back and get the owner and say, hey, I want you to close your eyes because we've taken something that was old and restored it to something new. What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you that the reason why you are being frustrated is because in the restoration process, when God takes off the blinders, you expect to see the old you. But God says in this restoration process, I'm giving you a whole new life. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to restore you back to what you used to be. Whew. When people see you in this next season, they're not going to see you as that old Honda Civic that they saw before they put you in the garage. No, 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 no. Everything that you have experienced up until this moment, God says it's been a restoration. So don't look for me like you saw me last year. Don't look for my ministry to look like what it looked like two years ago. 
Don't look for the preaching of the gospel to sound the same way that it did two years ago because when God restores you, he always restores you to better. Somebody just need to put in the comment section, God is making me better. No, 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 no. I'm not going to look the same. I'm not going to sound the same. My life is not going to look the same way that it looked when you saw me five years ago because that wasn't working for me. No, no, no. You were breaking down in that with that motor. You were breaking down in that relationship. You were breaking down in that church. But God says to you today, I'm restoring you. I'm making you whole. I I, I come to preach to somebody and I come to prophesy somebody out of, of, of depression. I come to prophesy somebody out of being complacent. I came to prophesy somebody into a new dimension. I come to prophesy you into a whole new tax bracket. I come to prophesy... Oh, Oh my God, I come to prophesy somebody into a whole new way of thinking. I'm prophesying you out of dead relationships. I'm prophesying you out of dead churches. I'm prophesying you out of dead homes and dead cities. And I'm prophesying in you into better. I'm prophesying to you to better. He says, I will restore to you the years. Now, that word restore in Hebrew means this. Listen, it means to make compensation. Ooh, I like to fell out of the shower this morning. I, I, I almost fell out in the shower when I started hearing the Lord speak. And when I went to look it up, that word restore means to make compensation. What, what are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying is God, is getting ready to give you compensation for every year that you've worked for him. No, 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 no. No, I'm talking about every year you sang in that choir. I'm talking about every year you ushered. It was 10 years ago. And yeah, you don't go to church like you used to, but God says that's not going to change my recompense. That's not going to change how I'm going to compensate you. I know you're not as as avid in the church and avid with prayer and avid with reading your word. You need to get that straight. But God says what I'm getting ready to do in your life is not even going not even going to require you to do anything. I'm giving you back compensation. He says I'm restoring you the years. Yes, it would be great if you were still working in the church, but even, but even, but even if you're not where you're supposed to be right now, he says, I'm going to restore unto you the years. Good to see you, Superintendent Todd. I'm I'm going to restore unto you the years. That means what I used to do, the things that God saw me doing. He says, I'm going to restore to you. He says, I'm going to make compensation. He says to make whole or to make good. That's what that word in Hebrew means. It means to make compensation. And he says, don't be discouraged when you don't get back what you've sown. He says, I don't want to give you back what you gave. He says, I want to give you back greater. My God, my God. I want to give you back greater. Three things and I'm going to be off here. And I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost strong on this live this morning. Three things. It's in chapter two, verse 19. The three things that God says he's going to restore. And I'm telling you, if you grab grab hold to this, your life will never be the same after today. He says, I'm going to give you back grain. I'm going to give you back wine. And I'm going to give you back oil. Glory to God. I'm in the Bible. I'm not making this up. Joel chapter 19. He says, behold, I will send you uh, corn, which is grain, corn, wine, and oil, and ye shall be satisfied with that. Now, I got to break this down. He says, I'm going to give you back grain. I'm going to give you back corn. What does that mean? No, he's giving you recompense. He's giving you compensation. He's giving you back grain. What is grain? Grain is representing provision. My God, my God. And and many of you that have sown into this ministry for the last four years, you better look out. I'm telling you, you better look out for checks in the mail. 
You better look out for, unex listen, unexpected favor. You better look out for unexpected calls and debt cancellation. He says, I am restoring or providing compensation over the years. He says, of the grain that you have given, the provision. There's provision that is coming to your house. This next season, you will not have to worry about money. I want you to go ahead and start listing those names. I want you to go ahead and start. I know we wait until the end of the broadcast, but I need to prophesy this thing while it's on me. He says, I am going to restore back to you grain. Those of you who have been experiencing financial difficulty, God is speaking to you today. God says, I'm getting ready to unlock. I'm getting ready to unlock provision for you. And it won't just be, listen, hear me, hear me, hear me in the spirit. It won't just be for the last season. He says there are going to be years of recompense that are coming to you. I'm talking about every seed that you've sown in faith. Every moment that you moved according to faith. God says grain. Yes, Kayana, my YouTube. Yes, I thank you for witnessing. He says, I am giving you recompense. In the area of provision, the things that you have in your mind, the business, the next entrepreneurial desire that you have, God says, I'm getting ready to support and supply and provide provision for what you need me to do. You won't have to brown nose. Listen, you 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 won't have uh, 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 to 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 change your your. Uh, your voice when you get into the, the boardroom, God says, no, you're going to show up as your authentic self and favor is going to meet you there. I feel the Holy Ghost, Felicia. I don't know why, but God just keeps showing me your name. I know it's because you're, you're, you're commenting, but God is saying, I'm getting ready to release favor in your life like you've never experienced. He says, there's favor on you from your bloodline glory to God. You have, you, you have a generational favor that's getting ready to re be released in your house. Woo! That's why the warfare has been so great in terms of your finances, because that's because what God says, he says, what has been stopped up and what has been held up, I'm getting ready. The pressure is building. That's the pressure building. And when God releases it, he says, you better, you, you're going to know that it's an open heaven. He says, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. I got to move on because because we got to go. He says, I'm going to give you grain. But then secondly, he says, I'm going to give you wine. My God, my God. He says, I'm going to restore unto you wine. What does wine represent? Wine represents joy. <laughs> ah, Yvonne changes. I'm telling you, God is getting ready to do something for you in your house. He says, I'm not just going to give them provision, but I'm going to give them wine. Thank you, Buffy, for, for those notes. What does wine represent? Wine make it uh, 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 refers to a merry heart. Whenever wine uh, was, was around when they were feasting, it was to bring joy. Woo! The first miracle that Jesus did was to allow this couple to not experience depression, to not be embarrassed, Woo! To, to, to not have to look as if they were not in the company of Jesus. And what a misrepresentation, excuse me, what a misrepresentation of Jesus in your life is when you have no joy. My God. Saints should not be walking around here without joy. God says, I'm getting ready to give you new wine, but I can't give you new wine in the same life that you just came out of. Whew. You got to allow God to restore you. I can't put new wine in old wineskins or else the jars will break. 
And some of you, you're looking for new wine in your old life. But God says, no, you got to allow me to do some reconstruction under the hood. You got to allow me to get some of those dents out of you. You, you got to allow me to oil you up a little bit. He says, I got to change your life in order to give you new wine. Some of you need to stop pushing back on restoration. It's not going to look like your last season. It's not going to look like your last life. It's not going to look like your last relationships. It's not going to look like your last friendships. No, because when God restores you, he always restores you to a new way. He's not going to put an old engine into a restored Cadillac. No, he's got to give you a whole new makeup. And some of us have been fighting that. When God restores you, when you lose weight, you can't go back and put on the same clothes. You're going to look crazy. You're not going to even look like God did anything for you. So God says, I got to shift you. I got to shift your thinking. I got to shift your life. I got to shift your way of functioning so that I can give you new wine, new joy, new joy. Somebody just needs to declare that I'm getting my joy back. I'm getting my happy back. I'm talking about folks in church. I, I, most of you all, we we have a, a few people who 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 are who are not si saved that pop in every now and then. But most of us are, are saved and been saved a long time. And you're sitting in church and you're functioning, and you you're depressed, and you're functioning, and you have no hope, and you're preaching, and you're singing, and you're ushering, and you're exhorting the people, and you're playing the organ and playing the drums, and, and, and your mind is depressed. God says today, I'm giving you new wine. I want my joy back. God says today, today, I'm restoring unto you the years. He's, if, if, if we had to tag this text, I want you to put God is issuing a refund. <laughs> that's, what's, that's what restoration is, a refund. For everything that you've given out, God says, I'm giving it back to you but I'm not giving it back to you the same way. I'm giving it back to you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together. I'm going to get to my third one, but I got to tell you this. I got to give you this. Stop fighting restoration. Stop fighting it. Stop fighting how God wants to show up in your life. You may not have all the agency right now. You may not be able to explain what you feel, but that's why you need this word. He, he says, I, I, I'm trying to do a new thing in you, but you won't let me because you're looking for what you, what you saw last year. I want to I make your name great, but I can't do it with the same engine that you had last year. I want to bring you to your place of wholeness, but you won't let me do it because every time I show you something new, you think it's the devil and you, you pull back. But God said, no, no, no. Lean in into restoration. Lean into the new thing. Lean in into the new place that I want to bring you to. Lean in. Stop fighting restoration. Stop fighting how God wants to show up in your life. Stop fighting the new connections. I know they don't look like your friends last year. I know they're not the same color as your friends that you had before, but the same, the friends that you had before, they won't do nothing for you. So God says, I'll put you in a whole new community. Woo! I'll give you a whole new community. I'll give you a whole new setup so that I can restore you, not back to what you used to be, but restore you back to the future. What an oxymoron that is. How do you restore to something new? No, 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 no. You, you've been looking for God to do what he did. God says, no, I'm, I'm not in what I did. I'm, I'm looking at what I'm going to do. Some of you need to look for new jobs. Because where you are keeps pulling you back to where you used to be. I'm not telling you to be unstable. I'm telling you to lean in into the restoration. And we get this high on Sundays and we hear the word of God on Sundays and we go back to jobs that bring us back to the place that we used to be. But God says you got to have enough faith in this season to move towards restoration and restoration looks nothing like what you used to be. It's got a whole new paint job. 
the bones are still the same, but I don't look like what I used to. And you got to start making people respect you, not for what you used to be, but for who God has restored you to be. That's why you're not fitting in the same circles that you used to fit in. I'm closing. That, that's why you don't fit in in the places that you used to fit in because God has restored you to better. I'm telling you, you, you don't fit in. You used to, but now, now you're just standing on the wall and, and, and just trying to figure out God what's wrong with me. Now, you know, restoration would have you crying for no reason because God is beating some dents out of you. That's why you cry for no reason, because God is transforming you from the old you to the new you. I, I, you need a part two. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, 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 that that's, that's the tension. He's beating some dents out of you. He's changing the muffler in you. <laughs> he, he's going to restore, he's going to restore grain, which is provision. He's going to restore wine, which is joy. And then finally, he's going to restore oil. I am in Joel chapter two, verse 19. He says, you shall, uh, he says, I'm going to send you corn, wine, and oil. Oil in the Old Testament, as well as the new, represents the anointing. Why he put this one last, just, just built me up. I'm telling you, uh, bless you, uh, Scott, for sowing. He says, he says, he says, I believe that's in it. He says, I am restoring to you provision, joy, but then there's a whole new anointing that's getting ready to be released over your life. I feel like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump up in just a second. I, I, I'm going to dance in a minute because what God is saying is through this process, you thought, you thought that you had lost your anointing. You thought that you had lost the oil. You thought that the oil had been wasted. But what God says to you today is that in this restoration process, I am restoring unto you a new anointing. The anointing that it took to function and operate in your last season is not going to be the anointing that is going to take for your new season. And God says, I allowed you to be crushed. I allowed the canker worms. I allowed the palmer worm. I allowed the caterpillar to eat up your old harvest because God says I was wanting to issue you a new anointing. And I came to tell somebody today that today is the day of a new anointing. Woo! I feel the holy, I feel like giving God praise. I said today is the day of a new anointing. Felicia, go ahead and run. I said, today is the day of a new anointing. And everything that the enemy thought that he was going to destroy, everything that the enemy said you would never have, God says, I have anointed you for greater. Woo! I feel like dancing. I, I had to call on uh, Bishop Jacobs to help me this morning. Because somebody needs to know that everything that the enemy thought that he was going to destroy, that God has given it back to you. But it won't look like the same. It's a new anointing, a new anointing for your ministry, a new anointing for your assignment, a new anointing for the prophetic word that's over your life. New, new, new. Woo! I'm telling you, somebody need to take a praise break right there. Woo! I said new, a new anointing. It's your season of restoration. Did you hear what I said? I said it's your season of restoration. Woo! Woo! You, I'm telling you, somebody needs to hop up and give God praise for new. Woo! All things are passed away. Behold, all things, all things have become new. I'm telling you, all things have become new. What the canker worm and the locust and the palmer worm 
and the caterpillar ate. God says there's a new anointing coming out of this. This is your season. It's a new season, church. Did you hear what I said? I said it's a new season, church. Don't let the devil take you back to where you used to be. God says, I'm showing you a whole, a whole new vision. Behold, a brand new vision. Did you hear what I said? I said it's a whole new moment, a whole new moment for your life. And I came prophetically to declare to you, this is your refund season. I know tax season ends, I believe, tomorrow. And most of you have perhaps, I don't know, gotten your refund or even had the payback. I don't know. But God says, even in the natural, it's the spirit. So it is in the spirit. It, for everything that you have poured out, God said, it's your, it's your refund season. It's your refund season. And yeah, you think the government can refund you, but when God gets ready to refund you, <laughs> eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men. Listen, church, the things that God have prepared for you. I want you just to lift up your hands and just start thanking God. Just tell him thank you. Put in the tell God thank you. We're thanking him in advance. Yes, Annette, I love that. I often say that. When God releases unto you what is back pay, he always gives it to you with interest. Everything that you've suffered, God says, I'm not just going to give it back to you. I'm going to give it back to in the tear. He said, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. My God, my God, my God. Favor and overflow. Yes, the testimonies are coming in on, uh, on, on YouTube. Overflow for the last two weeks. That's because you've been sowing. That's because you've been putting in the work. It doesn't look like you've been getting the return. I told God with tears running down my face, even as close as last night, had a little meltdown. I said, God, wait a minute now. But then God says, wait a minute. Am I a man that I should lie? No, 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 no. You, you, even if you don't ever do anything else, I got to pay you back for what you did. Oh, this is all the time that I have. I'm telling you, church. I, I, I'm, I'm setting myself up to hear testimonies of how God has restored your life after that divorce. I'm telling you, I, I know the process. I know the process is, 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 whoo, it's a process. It is, it is a, a strenuous gut wrenching process, but God says, if you survive the worst of it, watch me restore you back to the future. I don't want to take you back to when you was, no, 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 no. I'm not going to take you back before the divorce because if, if, if that was effective, many of those things wouldn't have happened. But God says, no, I'm going to restore you back to better. <laughs> ah, glory to God. Woo. Do it, God, do it, God, do it in me. Woo. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not going to restore you back to who you were before the heartbreak. No, 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 no. Are, are you a witness, Yvonne? Do you join me as a witness to that? I, I'm, I'm not going to restore you back to who you were before the heartbreak. No, 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 no. We don't want to be who we were before. No, let me restore you back to who I want you to be. It's a beautiful thing when you let God do it. Yes, Melchi, I, you even you I, I got your inbox yesterday. You, we're right in the same vein. He, I'm telling you, it's a beautiful thing when you allow God to restore you. It's it, it, you're gonna have some crying days. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have some moments where you can't explain what God is doing, but stay in the restoration process and let God do what God does. God has not forgotten you. God has not forgotten your labor of love. He hasn't forgotten what you've done for him and for his church and for his people. And some, some of you say, well, I have never really been heavy in church. I've never really done. No, no, no. But you've been a good person. 
You've, you've been an encourager to people on your job. No, you may not have had a position in the church, but you've been a good person. You've been a great cousin. You've, you've, you've taken in your sister's kids. You, 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 you've clothed kids that weren't even yours. God says, I'm going to, I've seen that. You were anointed to do that. No, you did not have a microphone in your hand, but you've been an auntie to kids who have been abused and whose parents did not want them. You've, you've fed children whose parents did not, did not have, it, it didn't do anything for them. And God says, I've seen that. It's not all about what you do in church. Yes, that's good. But you've encouraged people when, when you needed encouragement. God says, I'm going to restore back to you that. You've given people five, 10, $15 when you didn't have it. He says, I saw that. You worked in churches that did not honor and respect your gift. And you showed up every week, week after week, knowing you shouldn't have been there. But God says, even if you were out of place, you worked. And God says, I'm going to restore to you the years that you gave. You saved people's represent, uh, 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 reputation by keeping your mouth closed. God says, I saw you keep your mouth closed and exercise some tact. He says, I'm going to restore unto, the year, unto you the years that you had to keep your mouth closed and save other people's. Let me close this book. He says, I'm going to restore unto you the years. <laughs> He says, and you shall eat in plenty. My God, my God. That stuff you know about people that you could have blew up their spot. And you said, God, I, I just, I, you know, I don't understand. God said, because you kept your mouth closed. He says, I'm going to restore to you the years that you kept, that you, you, you exercise integrity. That means something to God. That means something to God to be faithful to systems and loyal to systems that are not loyal to your destiny. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been told you to leave, but I'm still going to reward you for your faithfulness. And your, your years, how old you are doesn't matter. When God gets ready to give you recompense, he says, you're not too old. You're not too young. You're right where I want you to be. I want to pray that we're going to give. Father, we thank you for restoration. My God, I need you to put those names. So I need to, I need to call out these names while the prophetic word is flowing. I thank you for restoration. I thank you, God, first for the closing of doors. I thank you for destruction first. I thank you that you allowed the enemy to eat up some of the corn. I thank you that you allowed the enemy, God, to take some of that oil. I thank you, God, that you allowed the enemy to drink up some of that wine because I was in the wrong place. I thank you for closed doors. I thank you for the heartbreak. I thank you, oh God, I thank you for the rejection. Because it was in that destruction that you were able to facilitate my restoration. God, we thank you. For every moment of tears, because we know that you're going to reap in joy. We're going to reap in joy. God, I thank you for Larry. I thank you for Kenneth and Renee. I speak restoration over Terrell. I speak restoration over Alicia and Joshua and Jordan and Tamia. I speak restoration in the lives of Constance and Rod and Nathan and Derek. I speak restoration over Ayana and, and Vanessa and Earl. I speak restoration to those who have experienced heartbreak. I speak restoration to Kiara. Oh girl, when I saw you this past week, I saw an anointing, a new anointing on you. And I think I mentioned something. I, 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 I think I said something, but, but God says for what you've been through, everybody doesn't know what you've been through. Some people think they know. But because of your heart, you haven't shared everything because you've protected people. But God says to you today, because of the years that you have had to suffer, God says, I'm getting ready to restore unto you new wine. You're getting ready to have joy like you've never had it. My God, my God. I speak over uh, Mildred White, Mother White, and I speak 
restoration of the mind in the name of Jesus. Many more years we speak. Pastor uh, Victor Baines, we speak restoration. Lady Baines, we speak restoration in the name of Jesus. Don't think that I'm just doing this. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm sending a word. Kashira and Marius, in the name of Jesus, Tania and Tyrone and Tyree, I'm speaking it. I'm speaking it. I'm speaking it. Felicia, Nari, Rashad, and Tanea, Jackie, Larry, Sarah, Sally, and Marion. We speak restoration for everything that the enemy tried to destroy. It was a setup. Monique, you see? We speak restoration in your life. Del Monte, restoration. Cherie, restoration. I want you to start looking for the miracles. And for those of you who are standing in proxy, stand in proxy, I speak that as you stand in proxy for these names, that God is going to bless you with double. Secreta, we speak over your life. Brenda, Hakeem, Brianna, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, it's done. Put in the comment section, it's already done. Khadidra, I believe I've got that. And, and Shonda, we speak that it's already done. It's done in the spirit realm. And I'm telling you, you are to go ahead and celebrate. Celebrate the fact that God has restored to you everything that the enemy thought he won over. Oh, no, 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 no. You, you, you may have eaten up my grain. You may have eaten up my wine and my oil but God is releasing it better. He's releasing better and greater to you. I want you to get your three, five seed. I want you to get your three, five seed. Those of you who have been sowing, uh, Melchie said she's been receiving just an increase and in overflow in her gifting for the last two weeks. I'm telling you that number three is the number of completion. God is closing the door to some things. And he's opening it up with the number five of favor and grace. Monique Cooper, Kay Kiera and Mariah. I want you to get that three, five seed. And I want you to sow that seed today. And I want you to entitle it, put it in the note, restoration. That is what God is doing. He's, he's calling restoration to your life. He, while you're sowing, restoration is coming into your finances. If you're sowing, I need you to put in the comment section, I'm sowing my three, five seed. I'm sowing my three, five seed. I am putting in the atmosphere that God has put a completion on some things, but he's opening the door to grace and favor. I want you to put in the comment section, I'm sowing my restoration seed my three, five, see, some of you say, hey, I can sow, I, I, there are at least three of you that say, I can sow 500 today. I can sow 500 today because I'm sowing, I'm sowing for my children. I'm sowing for my future. Thank you for sowing, Constance. I'm sowing, I'm sowing this seed in faith for the next move that I'm making. I'm sowing this seed, this seed for, for my next season. I'm sowing my three, five seed. Thank you, Buffy. Thank you, Brenda. I'm sowing my three, five seed. What is my three, five seed? My three, five seed is I'm walking in divine favor. Blessings to you, LaCarol. I'm walking in my divine favor. Some of you say, I can't sow five, but I can sow three. I can sow three because this word has liberated me out of what I used to be. Woo! Ayana, Ayana, did you hear what I said? I'm not sowing out of what I used to be. I'm sowing into what God has said I am. I'm telling you, if I were you, I would, I would make the note that this is my restoration moment. I will not let my neck, bless you, Danita, for sowing. God's blessings be upon you. I will not let this moment slip by without allowing God to see my faith. Blessings to you. Blessings to all of you, Asia. Bless, blessing to all of you that are sowing. Listen, this is all of my time. 
I would encourage you to share this word with somebody. I need at least 21 of you to share this word. Somebody needs to know that this is not the time to be discouraged. This is not the time to be disappointed. This is the time to lean in to restoration. This is not the time to push back. Blessings to you, Martina. This is not the time to push back. This is the time to lean into what God is doing in your life. The next six months, listen, the next six months, mark my words, the next six months are going, it's going to be like a whirlwind. Blessings to you, Brenda, for sewing. It's going to be like a whirlwind. You're not even going to recognize yourself in the next six months because God is going to do it so quickly. And some of you think, some, some, some of you just listen, but I'm telling you within the next, this word is getting ready to catapult you into another dimension. Because You've been looking to see what God did. And God says, I'm not doing what I did. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Blessings to you, Kiara, for so I am doing a new thing. Have you not known it? No, 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 no. You can't recognize it because you've never seen it before. That's why the word of God says eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard. You, you're looking for people to validate something that has never been seen before. Did you hear me? That's why you can't get this. You're looking. That's why you feel like you don't have the support. Because listen, y'all don't push me to do a series now. Because that's the second person that done said you need a part two. You're looking for people to support something that they've never seen before. God said, that's not your community. That's not your people. I am putting you in a place. That's what God told me. He says, I am putting you in a place connected to people that will honor and respect the wine, the oil, and the grain that is on your life. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all not talking to me. And sometimes I got to, <laughs> Lord, Felicia, Felicia said we need an evening service. Now don't, don't, don't tempt me now. Cause we'll put it together. But, 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 but some of you have been frustrated because the same people that saw the old wine, the same, the old oil and the old grain, those are not your people. They're still trying to put you in that box. Those are not your people. God tried to disconnect you well before now, but you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't lean into the restoration. So God had to allow them to talk about you. God had to allow them to mistreat you. God had to allow them to reject you because otherwise you would stay right there. But no, no, no. In, in restoration, we allow God to put us in the community that he needs to, 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 that will appreciate the grain, the oil, and the wine that is on our life. And it's going to take some getting used to for some people. When God starts shifting you, it's going to take some time for people to get used to, but, 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 but God says, I'm going to restore unto you the years that the canker worm and the palm and the locust, all of those things are allowed to come just so that I can give you a new start. <laughs> Glory to God. I got to go. Yeah. Yeah. Buffy. Indeed. People don't support what they don't understand. And that's why you got to be able to flow in the spirit. You got to walk in the spirit. You got to discern in the spirit. Uh, listen, we have to go. Again, those who are sowing, make sure you sow your 3-5 seed today. You're sowing into your restoration. I want to hear the testimonies that shall come out of today's message. And for those of you who have said, hey, we need a part two. We need a rest. Uh, we, we need a, a series. We're going to hear what the Lord said, but I, I really don't think that God is done. There's so much more to um, uh, unpack here that I can't get in an hour time. But just know that what God is doing, you need to stay connected to this ministry. Hmm? What God is doing, you need to stay connected to this ministry. For those of you who have been connected for four years, we celebrate four years today. 
You need to stay connected because I'm telling you what God is doing is going to blow your mind. Some of you say, oh, well, I thought this, I thought this, bye bye. No, 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 no. No, while God is restoring, you got to give God time. Because when God does it, whoo, it's going to blow your mind. I better stop because I'm going to start prophesying to my own self. When God does it, you won't be able to recognize it because it won't be like nothing you've ever seen before. Listen, I love you. Thank you, Melchie. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, continued service and your uh, support. Blessing to all that God is doing in your life. I love you. And I'll see you on next week. Blessings to you all. Love you.